My name is Katie. I'm Cecilia. And I'm Sarah. We did Grand Central Art Center, and um, they are a local art center that's located actually in downtown Santa Ana. Um, so just a brief background on them. Are they right now? Uh, okay, so it was founded in 1994 by Don Cribb and actually a CSUF gallery director, Mike McGee. Um, it's, uh, it has 45,000 square feet of space, um, so it's fairly large. Um, what's cool about it is that the students that actually can go there, um, they're actually master's students. They have to be in the master's program for arts, um, and they actually can live above the center itself. Um, so there's 27 lofts available to them, and along with that loft comes a uh, studio space, which is about 800 square feet. Um, so they're able to work on their studio and their, uh, or in their studio on their art pieces and everything while they live there. So it's kind of more of a incentive to go into that whole entire master's program because um, you can live on campus, I guess if you want to call it um, that, and then you can also go downstairs and work on your art pieces as well. Um, the whole program is called an artist in res residency program. Um, so as long as you're enrolled in that master's program, you can actually go in and apply to be and live in Grand Central. Um, so now Sarah's going to talk about the SWAT. So for our strings, their location is in a really great spot because they have a lot of restaurants and nightlife, so it brings in larger crowds. The Grand Central is also affiliated with Cal State Fullerton students, and it's also completely free, which is awesome for college students because we don't have a lot of money. Yeah, it's free admission. So also with our Art Walk, they have, it's on the first Saturday of every month. And this is actually a picture of something that they had at one of their Art Walks, and it kind of shows how large the space actually is so that the artists can really express themselves. And then our weaknesses um, are their operation hours. They close at 4 p.m., which kind of eliminates their biggest, one of their biggest strengths is the large crowds that come in for dinner. And so by the time they get there, they're closed, so they miss out on a lot of people. Uh, their social media presence, it's not as good as it could be. They should really be updating that consistently. And uh, for their signage, this is just a picture of how small their signs are, and it's just really hard to see from the streets if you're gonna be passing by, so it would be probably more effective to have something larger. Um, and also reaching out to the surrounding communities in Santa Ana, uh, Katie's gonna further go into that in our campaign, but just reaching out to the people that are around the center itself, because those are gonna be the people that are coming in. For our opportunities, uh, to utilize the event calendars that are in OC Weekly and the OC Register to really promote the center itself, and also to continue to promote to the Cal State Fullerton students. This is a picture of, these are some of the students that live um, up in the residence that uh, Katie was talking about, just enjoying the space. And then our frets um, are basically the Laguna Art Museum and some other museums, they're just in a really affluent area whereas Grand Central just isn't in the greatest location when being compared to Laguna Art Museum, and they're just more popular in general, so ultimately we'd like to help increase their awareness to get them on the same playing level. And then uh, Nicole's gonna go into our goals and objectives. Okay, so our main goal for Grand Central is just to get more people to walk through the door so they know, so they're aware that Grand Central is there and it's affiliated with our school. Um, so our main objective is to achieve that goal is to target the four communities that we talked about with John and create a flyer. So our last semester, um, Grand Central had worked with the Practical Advantage team before and they created a campaign where they um, targeted Cal State Fullerton students. Unfortunately, that wasn't um, that much of a success because they did surveys and it came back that still students weren't that really aware of Grand Central. So we, uh, during our consultations with John, we, he uh, figured that targeting these four communities would be the best result. They're wealthy, they're in the area, they have time, and whatnot. So this is the, we did, our first strategy was creating like a whole demographic research about the four communities. So it's Floral Park, West Floral Park, um, Park Santiago, and Fisher. Fisher Park. So we did all the demographics and You'll learn later about how we implement it and whatnot. And then our second strategy was creating the flyer. So to generate, to promote the sales of the actual artifacts that are in the studio that are for sale, so they get, this is a nonprofit organization, so they're getting money for that. So we use the Patchwork Art Festival. I'm 
it wasn't that sunny that day, but this is what it looks like. Um, so vendors and food trucks come in and whatnot. Further talk about the campaign. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to talk about the campaign itself. So originally, when we sat down with John, it was we're going to target these four specific neighborhoods, and we're going to send out. We wanted to send out flyers or put something in a newsletter. Actually, um, they have a actual like monthly newsletter that goes out, and it's um, it just kind of informs the communities of what's going on um, during that month. Unfortunately, our deadline was the literally probably I think it was the day after we met with John, so it wasn't necessarily obtainable. Um, so we kind of took a different approach to it where we still gave him the secondary research of all of the um, the data, so all of the demographics of the area so that he can use it for further um, for further campaigns or further um, work for GCAC. Um, so what we actually did when we sat down with him again was there's a, pa uh, it's a festival called the Patchwork Art Festival. Um, and this, it goes on in downtown Santa Ana and um, it's just when all these vendors come out and they all have different forms of art, whether it be like we saw one with little like pins and they used threads and made little animals out of it or there's clothes or whatever. There's just a wide variety of stuff. Um, so our main objective for that was to pass out these flyers. Um, it was a one day flash sale that was going on inside Grand Central and we were trying to get people into the art center so they could buy the, um, the artist's work which were actually the students. So it was the students artwork that were on display and they were trying to get sales for that. Um, so uh, we walked around and Due to the client actually not being there, um, and that was an unfortunate event, um, we were directed to go and hand out on um, these outside and in the parking structures. So that's what we did. We passed out all 500 flyers. Um, and it was, I mean, it was a really good experience. Unfortunately, it rained. So it was the weekend, weekend of like torrential downpour. Um, so we walked around in the rain and passed them all out. And it was, it was unfortunate because because of the rain, there wasn't a whole lot of people at the festival. And, John has said there was around probably 2,000 people that would come through the doors of Grand Central on any normal sunny day at Patchwork. And unfortunately, since it was raining, there was a very few amount of people that actually went to the event, let alone stayed at the event for longer than an hour. So they didn't necessarily make it all the way around because it wrapped all the way around the whole entire downtown Santa Ana. Um, so for our, um, sorry, for our outcomes for it, um, there were 500 flyers passed out and only three were returned. So that kind of makes it hard to judge things. Also, we are assuming that only three were returned just because it was raining. So there wasn't enough people there, and we passed out all 500, but people are obviously wanting to go home or not wanting to be in the rain and getting soaking wet and cold. Um, um, so this kind of just shows there was $321.90 in sales that day. Um, there was, like I said before, only three flyers were used. Um, and we found this chart, it was through our research, um, and it was, it doesn't include social media, so that's kind of where it flaws a little bit, uh, but it says the flyers are only 26% effective. Um, and it's, it kind of shows with our numbers, we expected a higher number to be re returned, um, but it wasn't, that didn't necessarily didn't happen, um, which is unfortunate, but that was our main goal. And you know, overall, John was happy with any sales that day, um, just because it was raining, uh, like we said earlier. And um, so, I mean, three flyers out of the 500 obviously isn't a great percentage, but. It was what he wanted to do, so we implemented it, and we felt that we were successful in what we did, passing out all the flyers. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a great result out of it. So where the client goes from here, uh, there's the four areas that we talked about, so we gave him all that research, the demographics, all of that to kind of reach out to them and get them into the doors of Grand Central, because that was his main target audience that he wanted to uh, appeal to. So we um, suggested for him to just reach out to them, send them flyers. Um, he wanted to do a little door hanger, so we kind of suggested that as well. Um, and also there's many um, event websites. So Grand Central holds, they have a little tiny theater inside. So they have little events inside of that and they can get people through the doors that way um, just to kind of go through their store and all of that. Um, so by posting on the upcoming, or upcoming um, events on these sites, it kind of tells people like what's upcoming in the area and so that they are able to go. Um, we suggested that he use a timeline for posting all on his um, social media because his social media is kind of lacking. He did have a blog prior, um, but his social media isn't necessarily as strong as it could be. Um, so we wanted him to create a timeline of when he's gonna post and where to post it. Um, and then kind of ties into that is utilizing his social media. So this chart down here, it just shows the main reason for using it. Um, you can't really see it, but it kind of shows all the different um, reasons why. Um, and then lastly, we, we actually drafted a press release for him to kind of 
put out there um, to the public about the Patchwork Event Festival. Um, so this is the press release right here. It's kind of small, but um, so just something that he could post onto the event's website. Just something to give him so that he can further implement all of his ideas. And then Nicole is going to talk, or no, Sarah's going to actually close this out and thank you. And we just want to thank our client for allowing us to work with them this semester and we wish them the best of luck with their future endeavors and hope they choose to work with us again in the future. And are there any questions?